It's April 6th, 2022. My pattern where my body awoke this morning looks like this. There are many patterns, but this is the only one I have access to. Um, or the only one I was told is what my baby seal at the, um, if dad's having a bad day kind of a thing. And actually I was told just to pledge of allegiance to it, so I did. Um, so, there's this, um, there's a couple of things. One is, is that if, when, if and when time stands still, because for a different purpose it does, um, um, in a reparation kind of a way, walking down the staircase and at the bottom, perfect, with aviators, sunglass, my sunglass person is there. And then we walk out the building and at some point he says to get on his back and he's wearing a white shirt um, and then he tells me to close my eyes, and he'll tell me when to open them, and I do, and then when I open my eyes, there's a, um, skyscraper, almost a needle in the landscape, and he asks if I can identify the building, I said, I don't know. I mean, it looks in New York City. I'm, it looks, is this New York City? He said, I can't tell you that. I said, all right. I said, well, that's where I've been from with buildings like that. So is that the Chrysler building? I mean, I'm not, he says, no. He said, um, he said, I'm just going to give you three letters associated with that building. I said, all right. Um... And it was MFA. And I said, well, what does that mean? What does that stand for? Like, what does it do? He said, I can't tell you that. I said, all right. Um, and there were others, smaller or shorter, whatever, humans, I suppose, or figurines or forms of some sort. Um, and they... Uh, knew something about the place that I was in that sound, um, was, uh, they have a product there with those three letters. That's about as much as I've ever heard of it in my whatever. Um, so that was that, but I was, I, they call it piggyback. I was holding on to his back, um, and he was carrying me, um, by foot, by his feet, um, so that happened in a time and hole in space somewhere else, perhaps humans call it a dream, it's the only thing I would qualify as a dream, because he was right, I was right, and it just felt right in that one moment, and it's never felt the same ever, walking human by myself, um, so there's that. Then there's um, one of the local, like, I don't, I was never a bartender, and I don't really drink, so um, when somebody offers a drink, I'm like, I, what is the, like, what, I don't know, what do you say, what are the choices, like, what are the, the names, and Forget of whatever's in it. I mean, one has grapefruit, which I was handed. They called one sex on the beach, and they called the other one a sea breeze. Whatever that meant. I know it's important, because there's only two drinks ever. Um, and then some guy once uh, offered me a mojito, whatever that was. 
Um, so there's that. Um, but now there's an interesting thing that if in a theoretical of there's a movie land Hollywood put out and I'm like, all right, so if there's like a Michael Douglas dad in the movie falling down somewhere in his position of trying to not have a bad day at the office um, for his baby seal and the great big white shark that is, she's balancing on his nose and they got really sharp teeth, so everybody tries to not, everybody wants to help Michael Douglas and the family, um, so the baby seal doesn't get eaten. So, now, there's that, and then there's the, um, if there's, like, a data torrent of things, of contribution somewhere in the solar system of we have one sun, um, and anyone was, for some reason, if dad was having a really bad day, and someone gifted themselves some information ahead of schedule that may have derailed one of the children from getting to the marriage altar with the person in the aviator sunglasses, the sunglass guy that she belongs to. Um, how would that work in actuality in Michael Douglas at falling down terms? So, I'm like, alright, so now if the information they were gifted, if, like, the letter A has some kind of bell curve with a bridge on it, and they were gifted these pearls of wisdom in order to make sure that the one whatever got to the sunglass person at the bottom of the staircase that she wants to be with and he wants to be with her. Um, those maybe pearls of wisdoms or marbles or whatever word they call them um, in prior knowledge for a greater good or a greater purpose. Um, if that's perhaps like an AI, because it somehow was taken from a data torrent and was planned in some fashion. And Dad, of course, wants to do right by... I mean, he's a yes man, so the big white shark doesn't need him either. So, and he doesn't want to have a bad day at the office, let's be honest. So, um... If the people who had some form of ticket or knowledge or opportunity in an AI sense prior to, I, I'll be the ID here um, in Eastern Athletics Association, it becomes an idea, I-D-E-A. Um, so I'm walking as an ID, an intelligent design of some sort. There's some form of plan in some grandiose whatever. There's some data torrent. Um, and then there's a whole lot of people that seem to have this AI advanced intellect about this intelligent design and what may or may not happen in my scenario. Um, which also leads to other things. So what is really interesting is considering I was born with an ID and there's an AI somewhere and there's a data torrent somewhere at planning. Um, I'm confused why all of this seems to get in the way of me making it to the altar with the correct... Now, on my 31st chronological birthday, in this, this is the year, just because it seems like I'm boy crazy, but oh my god, look at that, it's a piggyback right there too. 
and I look almost boy crazy, but I'm not in, then there's boy cots, but whatever, um, it's really just, I don't understand why there's so many points in between me getting to piggyback and figuring out what MFA means to the person who I belong to and to as as his ID. I mean Canada already verified I was an ID. They're important people and they have a different pattern in the interior design of important things in the world. So if these are just swatches of important cloth so they can identify where your body is and what level of whatever. Oh, and then I was thinking, I'm like, okay, so that, like they used to say, like I had garbage pail and I had Cabbage Patch Kid doll packs of cards. Now they sell Pokemon. Then they were big into baseball. I didn't really have as many of those. Um, but you'd go to the store and in a silver lining of some sort, you like the York peppermint patty, you'd open it and then inside would be a pack of cards. But it was random selection in points of light of they didn't have AI or know that I was an ID back then, at least my parents didn't know. And so, whatever pack you got of faces and names are the ones that all of a sudden became your celebrities. But, I mean, I didn't have any. Those were mine. And the, whatever I opened was now what I became familiar with, or not familiar with, but what became the set on the set characters. So that's kind of how when I turn the TV on, the names and faces, they might not be the same names and faces that other kids got or other kids know about, but th in the position I'm in that's broken at the moment, and I can verify that it's broken, there is a teleportation device where they throw at me in their war theater and their IDOT machine or their IDOM machine the set of characters they want to use as labels with some skin attached, so they have skin in the game, so they're identifiable, identi identifiable creatures of some sort. So with that being said, I've been documenting the set of characters that came in my maybe baseball card pack or the Cabbage Patch Kid pack. Um, whatever. But in this data torrent that I've been documenting my health issues and the fact I've been verifying as if paperwork wasn't enough, that the man at the bottom of the staircase with the sunglasses, with the most beautiful I've ever feasted my eyes upon, that gave me a piggyback ride to some to overlook just in the distance the architectural look to try to identify one building or one whatever it was. That's it. So I, this morning, go into Linda's room. Oh my god. My knee joints aren't working. The hinges... <sighs> Fluid is not flowing freely, and my, there's an energy crisis of some sort between the extrinsic and the intrinsic, um, and not chemically induced in the sense of I'm not taking any form of outside, no aspirins, I'm not taking painkillers, I haven't taken anything in a very long time, 
Um, I've just been documenting what natural feels like with the food and water source that's readily available in this residential whatever I'm in. All right, so now there's a gentleman this morning on CBS called Michael Lewis, but spelled differently, L-E-W-I-S. And he came out with a book. Um, I really like the way he spoke this morning. Um, he was talking about how the difference in height between the top and then, like, say, six levels down. Um, that, for me, was a key op, and it sparked intuition of it's super important um, to make as a keynote um, for myself this morning. Best-selling author Michael Lewis is no stranger to tackling complicated issues in his books. His latest book, The Premonition, A Pandemic Story, is just out in paperback. Lewis investigates why the U.S. struggled with its coronavirus response despite being considered one of the best-prepared countries in the world. He also just launched season three of his podcast, Against the Rules. Michael Lewis joins us first on CBS Mornings. Welcome back. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks good, for having Good me. to see you. So you say that we are worse prepared now for another pandemic than we were in March of 2020. How is that so, and how can we change that? I think it, it just as a, as a culture, we have not wrestled with what just happened. Mm, I mean, yeah. that's the thing that it just amazes me, that I think there's like, you got to first accept that you failed, that you, when you have 4% of the world's population and 20% of the deaths, and you have more resources going in and more knowledge in how to deal with it, that something was wrong. And we haven't actually, there's been no postmortem explaining like, I mean, there are weird things that happen out there. The, why is the death rate in Miami triple the death rate in, in San Francisco? Like what was the, what, what worked, what didn't work? And, the, and on top of that, People have dug in their heels. Like, like I think that in the beginning of the pandemic... I'm, like, on the outskirts, by the way, with this conversation. Like, I... He's making me reach outside of my comfort zone to try to get to his level of knowledge in this, whatever he's speaking about, because I didn't get those statistics. I don't have access to that level. Whatever he's engaged with, I have absolutely no access to as a POW MIA in New York. Pandemic, the country could have been led. Could have been led to a different place. Instead, it's, it's divided. And if you come in now and you try to, I don't know, close schools in yeah. response to something more dangerous. Wearing a mask. Act, wearing a mask, getting a vaccine. You've got people's, their heels are done. There's a stubbornness. There's a stubbornness. So, so it, I, there's like a, a public education thing that didn't happen in the beginning that would be harder to do now because people think they know. Yeah. But isn't it that people do know something and there are two political strains here and some people are valuing freedom over a pure public health approach? There's some truth to that, but, what do you, you know, freedom freedom to do what? Do whatever they want. Freedom to infect yeah. other people yes, and kill them. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's not really, that's a very perverted idea of freedom, right? I was on sub uh, sub. sub Subsequent to that, um, I was on the playground yesterday with Anthony, or Anthony, uh, 2012, and he's playing with some of the local kids, um, and all of a sudden they wanted to play this game, Infection. And I'm like, no. And I stood up, I said, I, normally I stay in the backgrounds and I don't say anything. I go, listen to me. I don't like that the adults are doing it, and you're certainly as children... Not allowed to do it. I don't want to hear any game about infection. And what they're doing is they're running around tagging one another with their hands as infection. Uh-uh. Not having it. Nope. At my level of knowledge, absolutely not. I don't want my son to get tagged with some kind of horrible future just because some of the kids at the local park decided it would be fun because they've got some gang or mob mentality that they're trying to work through. Right. I mean, I think that it's, it's, there was this false dichotomy that was introduced very early on that we were choosing between, like, the economy and health. And the truth is it was never a choice. That if, you let, if you'd let this thing run in the beginning, the way it ran in New York, you'd have had neither. I mean, that, 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 that 
constraints on the freedom actually enable the economy to motor along a bit. So I, I think that like that wasn't explained. Mm -hmm. Anyway, all this is very grim. What was so interesting to me about this story, it's all which all takes place kind of before the pandemic, was it's amazing the talent we had that we didn't use. And like that, the people yeah. we had yeah. who were sitting in places waiting to be accessed. Who knew stuff. Who knew no, stuff. No, you call them the experts. You said experts, in your words, suck at telling their own stories. And sometimes they even have trouble making the information that they know interesting. That it, it, Quite often it can be very boring. So whenever there's a crisis, you say go to the L6 person, the person who's at level six. Don't go to the top person. Go to the L6 person who actually knows what they're doing. So this is the podcast that's just come out. The yes. It's the Rules podcast. And it's it's about experts. And it's sort of like exploring our problem. You know, we're really great at creating knowledge. And it is, as a society, we're like fantastic. We're the best in the world. Mm -hmm. We're not so good at figuring out how to use it and, or even know who has it. And one of, the, one of our stories in the podcast is just about this. It's about in, when you're in complicated systems government agencies, big corporations, and some crisis happens, some problem happens, it's not the people on the top who have the answer. It's, it's usually some very specialized expertise that's buried six levels down mm -hmm. in the organization. And what tells you, you know, what's interesting is, so why does that, that person... Is that like the old adage that someone and I spoke of once upon a time and I can't remember, I can't recall at this point, um, about six layers to Kevin Bacon. Like, you're always only six people away from someone who knows Kevin Bacon. Or Beacon, Bacon? Bacon. In the, in the Hollywood or movie industry or whatever. person down here have so much trouble getting what they know up here. Right. So you could, and this is partly the pandemic story. We had people down here mm -hmm. in public health who knew what to do and they couldn't get it into the heads of the people up here. And I think it's related to inequality and in that if you, when you have big gaps between one and two and two and three yeah. and all of a sudden level six doesn't feel like they can talk to level yes. one. Yes. And so part of our problem with expertise, I think is a problem with inequality is that the more inequality in the society there is, the harder it is for the person who actually knows something, who might not have a lot of status, yeah. who might be less like someone, a, no, a so, but supposed nobody. Yeah. But they're the superstar. But they're the superstar. Yeah. Right. And, and the trick is, like, finding those people. And, yeah. and we're glad that we found you. Yeah, we appreciate you. Yes. You're one of the best at taking something complicated and making it so exciting. Michael Lewis, yeah. the paperback edition of The Premonition and season three of the podcast Against the Rules is available now. We'll be right back. Now, on sports theme, oh no, it wasn't sports theme night because I wasn't wearing anything sports themed because I never know what the hell I'm being dragged into. Um, but on the, my 31st birthday, Tiafrio, Mark Ingalls had a Gotham comedy show. Asked if I wanted to go. I said, fine. He gave me whatever it was he wanted me to wear. I wore it. I get to this roof, then it got canceled. We go to this rooftop bar, and then, like, all of a sudden, the weather changed, and I'm freezing, and some really kind stranger um, offers me his jacket momentarily. But again, I would have said it was a blazer. That would be indicative of trailblazer. And I don't know if that's what he refers to himself as. But in hindsight, if it's like, what are you sporting today? It would be maybe a sports jacket. But not like a letterman jacket. Like an... I don't know. Again, in the... Um, they've confused all of these words. Like they've intertangled them. Um, but he was sitting with someone else and he lent me his jacket. And then I have a photo of me in the jacket was, which was on Facebook. I think I had a fedora on that night. Um, I was just, I was really cold and there was a long, some kind of water feature behind me. Um, and some kind of reflecting pool. Um, but that was my 31st birthday. Um... 
And that night just got horribly wrong. I was with wrong people. I just hated life then. I at least had my health, though, kind of, sort of. But I just hated being with Tiafrio. I hated being dragged around. He took me around. I just want to go home. And when the comedy show got canceled, but my birthday, and he's dragging me around until I don't know what time in the morning, just cab after cab. I don't even know where we went. And then just telling me all about his glory days when he was just so awesome and all these clubs were open in New York City. I'm like, you know, I didn't care then when you were there. And I certainly don't give a shit now because you're not that special or important. And I really hate that entire genre. Just so we're clear. <sighs> I told him so much then. I just really hate being human. There's been nothing that's gone right. It's star 1978, star 8378, Nicole Ketteruz. It's Earth, Solar System, Milky Way, Universe, Galaxy is Broken, and Speyside Station, Bayside, New York, 11361.